So let's talk about our country, okay? And this time, let's just focus it, not focus it on the current. Oh, our current as Mio, Kenya Kwanza, oh, IBC, oh, this and the other. Let's talk about the structure of the governance system that you have in the country. And we want to talk about why the Kenyan economic system does not serve Kenyans. Those are not my words or thoughts. Those are the thoughts and words of Mwalimu Mutemi Wakema, who is a very well-known activist. He is a community organizer with Kongamano Lamapinduzi. Mwalimu, good morning. Uh, good morning, Eric. Very good. Good Ta- morning, City. Good morning. Good morning, Mwalimu. Good morning. <laughs> Karibu sana to Kenya's biggest conversation. Yes, Auntie Sana. The hot seat. To welcome you to the conversation, City has the day's proverb from the Republic of Congo. Yes. Yeah. If the needle doesn't pass, the thread won't follow. If the needle doesn't pass, the thread won't follow. Mm-mm. There are several interpretations to this. Ndu, you can scroll down the mentions column. But, Bolimbo Mutemi, when you hear this proverb, what's your interpretation of it? Actually, it's the, perf- the perfect um, introduction to the conversation you're about to have. Mm. Because... Um, I put it to you that even just listening to the previous conversation uh, with, the, with the gentlemen who have just left the studio mm. uh, and many of our uh, conversations around this country is that um, we are treating uh, the wrong thing. We are, we, are, we are addressing or trying to fix the wrong thing. Um, Kenya... Uh, and most of the states across Africa mm. and, and most of the, 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 the so-called third world mm. were not created to work for Anjiko. Mm. They were created to work for the colonialists who created them. And we haven't fixed that. Um, we talk about Kenya getting flag independence in mm. 1963. But not really, nobody really fought for independence. Because uh, if you look at maybe the Maomo, there were many freedom fighters, but let's just talk about the Maomo. They were fighting for land and freedom, not independence. Um, the people who wanted independence at that time were actually the ones who were working for the colonialists because they wanted to be in charge of that colonial state. Mm. And they did get independence, but they never fought for it. So the needle (laughs) 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 and the thread never followed each other, you know, and we keep talking about um, um, the people who fought for freedom actually not getting So the Mau Mau were fighting for land Land and freedom. And freedom. The Kenyan land and freedom. What is freedom? Freedom is just being able to 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 do what you want um, and well, on your terms. On your terms. On your terms. Um, so you own your land yeah. and you do what you want mm. on your terms. So that means you govern yourself. You, um, self-governance is a term that was that came from. Uh, it's it's yes, it's self-governance, but that term came mm. from. Um, the people who actually got the independence. Okay, no, no, no. The so-called independence. For these people who are fighting for this freedom, mm. are they fighting for freedom to de- to make their own decisions? Mm. Freedom to determine what time they wake up, what time they sleep, what they eat, what where they, they work, the what they grow in their farms. Mm. So they to govern themselves. Yes. How is that different from independence? Um, independence is, um, the, the way the independence was packaged is self-rule in terms of govern, uh, a government. Uh, you remember before the white man came, there was no, there was, there was no, you know, the the state as it exists right now did not exist. Um, the state was created, um, actually accidentally, if, mm. if I could if I could say that, because um, when the initial white people came here, they were exploring, they were looking for routes to go to India to get spices, mm. uh, and then they found um, a very wealthy. Uh, land, a very wealthy, um, you know, uh, uh, unspoiled, wealthy Africa. And they saw the opportunities. And eventually they decided, you know, a, a few people decided, okay, um, we can extract some of these things and take them back to England or to wherever in Europe and, uh, and make a fortune. Uh, and when Kenya was created, it was created by the, initially by the Imperial British East African Company. Mm. It was a company. Uh, that's why Gashagwa can talk about shareholding because he actually is actually right. It was created as a company. Um, 
And then once the 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 Queen, Queen Victoria and the others in the UK uh, realized these guys are making huge fortunes, they decided to make Kenya a protectorate, uh, so that now the extraction could be uh, managed and also serve the, the 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 British Empire, which was collapsing at that time. Um, and and I will tell you how um, we were introduced into this economy, into that economy, that extractive economy. Um, initially they built the railway that was meant to transport all our resources to the coast and then ship ship the stuff to uh, to the to the UK and whatever mm. um, they needed our people the global slavery had just ended um, had ended or not just ended but had ended mm. and the, we talk about the last 400 years uh, the economy has been you know, um, supported by by cheap labor, which is what slavery was about, mm. and they needed more cheap labor to keep that production up. And so, um, they came and said, uh, "Eric, you have this. You're living here in your hut. You know, grazing your goats or doing whatever you do every day. Uh, but we need you to work in our farms because we need to grow coffee and tea and maize and wheat and all that, and we need cheap labor." because you can no longer uh, make your slave, but you're going to make your wage slave. So how do we do that? We are going to make sure that you start paying taxes. So you're in your land, grazing your goats. Someone comes from wherever and decides you're going to start paying taxes. Mm -hmm. You're going to pay a hut tax for holding a hut, and that hut has a pole at the center. You're going to pay tax pole, for that. Pole. For the pole tax. Pole tax. Yes. And then, and then, and then, and then uh, you have a wife um, and daughters. Mm. They have breasts. You're going to pay breast tax. Mm. You know? Um, so you have no choice. And, and that's not a conversation you're having. Mm. Uh, it's you're going to be coerced. You have to do that because... Uh, the state or the the crown, as we used to call it, has has decided, and so you have to, as a man, you have to get up and go and work and look for money, and then you're paid that pittance. That's wage slavery. So basically, the last 400 years, whether it's the formal slavery or the wage slavery, uh, is how this economy, uh, the global economy, has worked, uh, and that's why it does not work for us because it was not meant to work for us. It was meant to work for the extractors. And the thing is, the mm. economy is working for those it's meant to work for. Not the Kenyan society, but the individuals, a few individuals. That's why even when you go to school, you have a school system that filters a certain number, that cuts off. You know, when you hear people have failed, uh, whether you failed at class 8 or form 4, it's not that you did you not, you not get educated. Mm. It's only that we need, to a number. we need a certain number of managers or supervisors or workers in this sector and so we have to fi find a way to cut off that number. So we have a lot of people walking around traumatized that they failed in exams. And yet it's not that they failed. It's just that they are not, the economy does not need them. We, and, we, and, and, and scarcity, the scarcity of people creates competition for jobs. And then you can lower uh, the, the amount you pay people. That's why an average graduate earns 50,000 and has been earning 50,000 for the last 20 years. In Kenya, you know, the number of people who are earning over 100,000 in this country is shocking. So you're saying the economic system is still being controlled by the colonizer? So what the colonizer was very clever is, um, and I think the, the British learned this mm. from uh, from India when we were, they were leaving India because they were, they were, they were being pushed. Yeah, and they, may, may I suggest yeah. that they learned this mm. within their own neighborhood? Initially, before they even went to India, yeah. what they'd done to the Scots, what they'd done mm. to the Welsh, what they'd done to the Irish, mm. they had figured this system. By the time they are now exporting this expertise, mm. it worked. The, 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 the experiment, they had seen how it works lo locally. And, and, and they refined it. They, yes, they, they refined, refined it. it. They refined it. Um, mm. It's been refined in the last, actually even further in the last 150 years because the, economy, the economic system is, is exists right now. It's just the last one, mm. the feudal system, mm. whereby you, you take up all the land and then uh, you make those who are working that land now come to work for you for, 
for 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 no, let, let's for, take a step for, back for the land actually is theirs you mm. come and take it mm. you divide it up and having divided it up mm. you then allow them to work on that land mm. and then pay you for land which originally so was initially theirs. it wasn't theirs yes. initially it was you know people used to one inch uh, yeah just one it was land. used to go around and yes. you farm where you want to farm they so this it. person becomes a king or a lord or whatever takes over says, this is my territory and if you want to survive here then you have to come and work for me <laughs> and you work you farm and then you give me uh, a part of your your proceeds mm. your proceeds that was before the wage the wage economy uh, later on now that became the wage economy and and i was pointing out to to how the, they also learned that how do you control a population when you don't have the numbers you're a small group of people uh, then you have to use the same people from within the population uh, to control the, uh, the others. So what do you do? Uh, you create this education system that filters people. Some people, you take them to London School of Economics in Oxford and indoctrinate them, then send them back to their own countries to... <laughs> I'm very specific. To, car <laughs> to, to, to carry out your wishes. Yeah, to carry out their wishes. <laughs> if you look at almost all the PMs, prime ministers or presidents who... The first... Presidents yeah, of, the first of the Commonwealth. Yes, yeah. all of them went to LSE, from Jomo Kenyatta to Moi Kibaki to just look around the Commonwealth. Uh, uh, um, I mean, most of former British colonies, um, or Oxford or Harvard or the Ivy League, because it's a it's a it's part of uh, that system. Then they send these guys back. They are called the corporate elites. These guys do not think they are even Kenyan or African, although they are black. They think they, are, they belong to that system. And that's where, uh, when I started with flag independence, is that when those guys were handed over power in, at independence, they were not ha being handed over power to work for the people of Kenya. It's for the global system. I hope that makes sense. Mm. Well, it, yeah, for me, it makes, per <laughs> it makes perfect sense. It, it makes... <laughs> <laughs> If, uh, so, so if we got it wrong <laughs> from that point, then we've been living a lie and trying to fix a lie. So what are you saying, Tony? <laughs> Essentially, what you're saying then, at the point, let's just use Kenya as an example, because, I mean, we could look across the continent and there'll be very, very many uh, countries that would mirror this thing that you're speaking about if we were to look at it through that lens, yeah? So if we look at Kenya as an example, what ought to have happened when... Look, the Mau Mau fought and there was like, okay, so give us this flag independence. So we hoist our own and we say, this is ours now. We've taken it from you. But that was not enough is what I'm hearing you say. What ought to have happened at that point? Should there have been, right? So you carry on, you go where you're going. But should there have been a complete slowing off of all these things that were entrenched during the years of colonialism and said, thank you very much. Let us now find our own. But what happened was that there was just a proliferation of what had already been entrenched. That's what I'm hearing you say. What should have been the action when independence was granted or fought for or then gotten? What should have happened at that point? If you look at the, the, the Kenyan independent government, there's something it has been resisting mm. since then. Um, the possibility of a conversation between the people um, the governed and how they want to be governed. It has resisted that from 19, you know, those 62, 63, all the way. Mm. People have tried to force this conversation, including even the passing of the 2010 constitution. If you look at the contestations have been around people deciding what they want. Mm. Um, even devolution, uh, devolving power, uh, which was an attempt at realizing that centralizing everything does not work so let's 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 take the decisions to mm -hmm. the people mm -hmm. that was resisted and in fact immediately that constitution passed there was uh, it began uh, a very huge attempt to make sure that it doesn't work for the kenyan people mm. um you know uh, starving uh, the counties with money uh, you know just you know healthcare trying to decentralize healthcare because it's, it's all about, if you want to extract, then you need one decision maker at the center. 
uh, it's not very easy to extract when you have to deal with 48 governments <laughs> uh, so so we need to 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 take it back to the center i think that is a, the the brief that was given to the then devolution ministry that's why the ministry of devolution in the first government uh, after the new constitution of 2013 2020, 2013 sorry mm. uh, instead of taking money to the countries the money was given to the ministry of devolution and it was given to the then minister uh, anway guru current governor of the county i come from in Kirinyaga, who had written a paper to the world bank about centralization not devolution of power centralization of power uh, that paper i don't find it anywhere on the internet anymore i think it was scrubbed because uh, there, are, there are ways to do this mm. but that's the person who was put in charge of devolution and then they did what what was done which was called <laughs> um um uh, uh the big bang the big bang was release funds to the counties without structures destroy the what, what is this the transition authority was starved of funds uh don't have, initially didn't even have an office they couldn't they had staff but they couldn't go to anywhere to it was before now where we work we work uh you know remotely mm. they did not have an office and they did not have money for programs to try and prepare the counties to receive these resources and functions okay so that conversation even when you had a conversation in 2010 just to you know to go back, to pivot back to your question is that every time kenyans try to decide to to have a conversation around how they want to be governed even uh, whether they want to secede you know the what you've been seeing in uh, uh, mount kenya uh, i mean mount elgon or many other spaces where Kenyans have agitated at the mm. coast and all that, that they want to be, they don't want to be part of this union anymore. That's, they are crushed viol violently because we don't want to have that conversation. We want to maintain the extractive colonial state as was. Mm. And the thing is, Eric and City and Lou, this state has failed because we've tried to make it work for 60 years, not just in Kenya, in Africa, mm. across Africa, South America and all that. All these states that were created when a group of men sat somewhere in berlin and just started drawing lines on the map sure yeah we've been trying to make something that was not created to work for us it worked for the extraction system mm -hmm. but it didn't work, work otherwise us. but now it works for if you look at just just one last point if you look at who rises up within mm. the state to the position of power then it will tell you that it works for those for 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 the extraction uh, extractors mm. yeah if which we, extractor oh, sorry, the, sorry no. just just yeah, just uh, let me I will, let me not mention names because i don't want to be sued and you guys to be sued but i will tell you this mm. if you look at the last you know the, who has risen to positions of governance in the most uh productive counties in this country uh, let's say mombasa nairobi kiambu or even the presidency what is it that kenyans know about them what are they good at you know, and I'll leave it there. <laughs> it's extracting, you know. <laughs> <laughs> okay, look, excuse me. In times gone by, because the 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 fallacy of all of this could be that well okay these degenerative Africans probably they could not think of a way in which they could govern themselves, but we have history proves otherwise that we saw the kingdoms that had been established in on Africa in, in Africa before that. Mm whether you're looking at the kingdoms that existed here in this region, uh, East Africa down through the Indian Ocean and then through Zanzibar out to the south, whether you saw the kingdoms that existed in Southern Africa, whether you saw the kingdoms in West Africa, which I'm most you know um, um, aware of, when I think of people like Usman Danfodio and the kingdoms that they ruled, we did not have an extractive nature of things there was rulership there was leadership there was governance there was a way in which economies played out amongst well, themselves abundance. there was there was abundance there was a trade there was the trade routes that were already happening and somehow interestingly enough the wars that took place were not economic wars at that time so it would be a fallacy then to say that this extractive nature that we then use as the benchmark for governance and leadership in so-called democracies today after colonialism is the only way in which it can happen. Mm. Because there is proof that it happened differently before. You know, so then why would it be so difficult to shed this thing 
for six decades, that doesn't work. Let me ask the question, is the pursuit of dominance an economic factor? If you look at history of nations and how we're talking about the African kingdoms, for you to create a kingdom, you have to subdue some people. Oh, absolutely. But again, was it an economic factor of a fashion dissimilar to the one that we now see with the European colonialists? Because if you look at even the kingdoms that existed in those regions, there are two European gentlemen who did, well, three really, who did something remarkable. There was somebody called Otto von Bismarck, mm -hmm. the guy called Garibaldi, mm -hmm. the guy called Bros Tito. People who, in that particular time, brought all these wrangling little, little groups and brought them and made them a nation. Mm. But prior to that, emanating from around Turkey, there was an empire called the Ottoman Empire. You, don't, you hear of the British Empire. The Ottoman Empire was vast. Mm -hmm. Significantly. Mm -hmm. Huge. Mm -hmm. Now, came all the way to Dar es Salaam. Mm -hmm. Yes, huge. But again, the econo for you to have the sort of military might, there has to be some economic might somewhere. Go back as far back as even Alexander. Though one could argue that this issue of economics is what actually killed his, 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 his empire because his, his generals got soft. They, they go to places and they're living off the fat of the land. And they were sent to Congo to go and loot. But for some reason, <laughs> even, with this, even with this, you know, act of subduing, it was very interesting because if you look at it, even in the subduing, the people over which they claimed power did not suffer for livelihoods. Look, no, they did look not. anywhere you want to look. No, no, you, 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 you did not have no, an extractive. Yeah, mm -hmm. they didn't Actually, suffer for what they did was they yeah. made sure that the people that they ruled over in most cases they, assimil they assimilated nothing. you. Yes. Actually, they, they either did assimilation or once they came and you ceded to their power, they will let you self govern. Go about your well. business. Go about your business as long as you pay some tax or whatever allow their goods to pass That's through. True. In fact, I will I will put it to to us that. Um, uh, if you look at just Africa or mm. Kenya, let's look at Kenya and our communities. Most majority of our communities were even more democratic than, than what we have today. What you have today, mm. absolutely. And, and and the thing is, we normally conflate democracy with elections. Those are two totally. That's a capitalist thing that has been pushed by America. You know, in their as part of their hegemony. I think we are even more democratic in our traditional societies than we are today. And democracy being governance of the people, by the people, for the people. Uh, we had these systems. For example, uh, city, if you are born in my village in Kirenyaga, and let's say you are a, a, a hundred boys were born, um, maybe only one or two could ever rise to become elders in, 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 that, in my community. And there was that process. What did, when you were born, what did your family do? What did your clan do? Uh, did they perform the rights of, uh, you know, the, the, the prescribed by the society? Mm. Um, as you rose, as you grew up, how is your character and behavior? How is the character of your parents? How is the character of your uncles and aunties, your clan? Because if your uncle goes and messes up somewhere with somebody, it's clan, mm. your chance of ever becoming an elder is gone. Mm. <laughs> totally. <laughs> so your entire society is being looked at, mm. is looking at you. And, and then you become, you know, you go through the rites of passage, maybe circumcision or whatever rite of passage you have at that time. Then you move on to the, to the other stage. Uh, you're mentored into young adulthood or you become a junior warrior. And then even then you observed. Uh, you become a warrior. You get married. How did you, do you raise your family? You become a junior elder. There's a whole process that you go through such that the, there's a friend of mine called uh, Otieno Mbok. Uh, he's, a, he's an activist, uh, and he had this. He has this mantra. He keeps pushing since uh, 2017. He mm. says, "Operation No Elections." One, and uh, we ask him. We asked him, "What does that mean? What would you do without elections?" But he doesn't explain. But what do we decide to sit down and and, and do scenarios around that? Mm -hmm. What if we didn't have elections? You know, and we looked back and he said, "In." Though, though, as you said, there, are leader, there was leadership in Africa without elections before. How are these, how did our communities, how did the Kikuyus, Kalenjis, Luos, Kambas, Somalis, all these communities select their leaders? What were the processes? And so we did those scenarios. What if we said we have a parliament of 349 
uh, we have the, the statistics from our, um, our population census. Can we tell each community to use their traditional processes based on their percentage to give us MPs for our National Assembly? Mm. How many of the current leadership would make it through the, those mm. traditional processes? I doubt there's any. There's, I doubt there's any in any in, in, in any uh, in Parliament or in Senate would actually uh, rise up to become even the president. Let, mm. Let's just be honest, because the traditional systems were thorough and democratic, as you're saying. The mm. democratic meaning the entire society made that was decision involved. Mm. was involved in making that decision of who become whether it's the village, and then we had devolved power to the village. Every, uh, every village had a council, and the council. Uh, deliberated on issues i know of certain african communities like if you we had a conflict you and i would even sit for weeks just not to make sure that i've won or we've won make sure that we've been reconciled mm. i think we see that that's still in uh, some of the polynesian communities to mm. date uh we are who are africans who traveled all that way that that nobody wins there's no loser t winner take it all or loser whatever like you have to humiliate the the kind of things you're seeing now mm -hmm. uh with manda man i had the <laughs> very interesting conversation um uh, and the only point i'm going to make about manda man is that uh, people were consulted when the Mandamanas were starting, but they were not consulted when they were ending. <laughs> so just leave it there. <laughs> 26 <laughs> minutes to 10. Kenya's biggest conversation. <laughs> Mwalimu Mutemi Wakema is a community organizer with Kongamano La Mapinduzi. He's here with us this morning. He's pushing this uh, conversation. The Kenyan economic system does not serve Kenyans. It's rigged to serve somebody else. Who's that somebody else? This is the Situation Room, the only way to start your day. The camera continues and we are looking back into our system that we have in governance and what it, uh, how it's benefiting us. Malimu is saying, look, we inherited a system that had been established and set up by somebody else. And everybody who has now been operating in this system is basically running a system that was set up not to benefit the people but to benefit someone else and 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 you're saying this is the colonial system and 60 years down the road we haven't been able to get ourselves off these shackles i hear this conversation and i hear it often and and, and it makes sense but i always ask how is it that 60 years mm. generations later people have not been able to get themselves out of it you talked about the others historically we've seen empires and kingdoms just by having a kingdom means that there's one community that's domineering over others. Mm. That was what a kingdom was all about and an empire. It's when you say the, the Ottoman Empire spread all the way across Europe, across the Middle East, coming all the way into Africa. Those are communities that are domineering over others. And yes. they were domineering because they were doing something. They were forcing and subduing people and extracting something from them. Otherwise, what's the point of sending troops all the way? Mm. Yeah. But after they left did the people continue serving that system or not they did so um if you look at the people who came here mm. to set up this system first of all you know who are they a lot of these were guys who could not make it back home in europe mm -hmm. so they they set out to go and look for fortune first of all and they raped and murdered and plundered and, and pillaged and pillaged mm -hmm. you know and they they made a lot of money whether it's the opium wars in china or the looting in africa they did that and then they went back to i had to create states to help them do that and also create legal systems to do that so that you 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 you're saying that the current um education system the current legal system in this country was created to now facilitate the extraction mm -hmm. by subjugating the population mm -hmm. um, um i used to, i was born christian but i'm no longer christian but there's something the bible says or even quran it talks about scenes of generations going for three to four generations mm -hmm. and i think that is what you're experiencing because for example right now as an activist um my 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 parents my relatives are not very happy with me being an activist they don't question the government because the memory is still fresh of how 
uh, the colonial state subjugated beat up kikuyus in central kenya put them in concentration camps and villages you know with spikes mm. all over and ripped uh, women and kids mm. uh, that memory is very fresh i have a friend who's a serbian serbian was part of uh, serbia was part of the ottoman empire yeah. 500 mm. years ago and they still blame their politicians still blame uh, the uh, ottomans the ottomans 500 years later half, mm. half a millennium later because it's in the psyche mm. so unless but, but i'm not saying it's not changeable it is changeable because we have evidence of where it has changed you have mm. korea and uh, and um, um and uh, singapore why because what what then we are required is visionary leadership which is what you're lacking here because you have leaders who are you have to have leaders who have decided that we are going to end this now and what 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 we have with the our, our current leadership that was in, installed or serves that system mm. is that they are comfortable with the system they actually work to become part of that system I mean, let me give you examples i'll use the two current pro protagonists uh what do we see uh, when Raila comes and starts agitating in the 80s uh, late 70s early 80s mm. uh the kind of uh, agitation and struggle that he engages in and then later on the kind of struggle that he engages in he he tries to fight the system he ends up in 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 detention for i think around nine years and then what happens i think he learns a lesson or he's taught his lesson by force so he comes and decides to cooperate the cooperation i think starts from his detention mm. so he decides to join um moi and he's rewarded economically he's given monopoly of uh, the gas that you're talking about the gas cylinders Spectre international and all in the region he's given the molasses uh, plant so he starts accumulating and i think the lesson there i don't know i've never had that conversation with him but i think the lesson he learned is that first seek the economic kingdom, kingdom uh, <laughs> and uh, all make these money. other things shall, be added, things shall be added unto you because you're in a <laughs> extractive colonial system so just extract and make sure that you have a lot of money apart from now being able to mobilize people mm. uh, and you see this you know the minor jengas and the who's um, uh, have done the same um, the Sonkos and the Johos and the uh, Kafogos and the Who's uh, extract and make sure that now you have enough economic might now to say, let us sit at the table or allow me to uh, sit at the table so that you now you can discuss how, dis discuss how to divide this cake. Mm. William Ruto has also been very good at extracting. That's why he's, uh, he has risen and he became the, uh, the deputy president of the master extractor. You know Jomo Kenyatta, the son of the mass extractor Jomo Kenyatta, um, and 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 if those guys are comfortable because the system is working for them, why would they change it? I hope I've responded to your question. Why would they change it? And if those are the leaders who are we expect to change our lives, then, as I said earlier, we are, you know, we are we are we are addressing the wrong problem and the wrong issue. Those guys cannot take us to Canada. Do you think Kenyans see what you're saying as extraction? Because as you mentioned all those names that you've mentioned, all right, these are apart from let's say the Kenyatas and the Odingas, you could say post colonial, post independence, the other names that you've mentioned, there's several governors, like the current president, these are people who've come from rugs and risen and been propelled by people to the positions that they occupied right why did the people do that they were I, oh, are you saying people. that it's not the people who propelled them it's not the people that they were identified them. by this system thing and it elevated them what they did was they learned how the system works mm -hmm. and they made a choice so it's very being where i am um, as an activist is something called committing class suicide because uh, I was trained and taken to, you know, to a provincial school, Nigeria school, and then University of Nairobi. Deliberately, as part of a conveyor belt mm. to serve the system. Mm. <laughs> but I've broken away from that. I know how the system works. I know how to exploit it. Uh, and the people who are very good at exploiting it, first of all, you remember what, where, where, where we made that point of plunder, rape, pillage and all that. Mm. That is what the system wants. It wants people who are very good at doing that and it rewards them. That's why they rise up to positions of leadership. And the rest of us who think we can do better, that is enough for everybody, you're beaten down. Because then, for example, I'm sure there are billionaires in this country, mm. even more than 
the there are billionaires in this country who have made money without any tenders Honestly. without stealing from mm. anybody but we never hear about them mm. we never see them on spice fm or read about them in the newspapers because that story does not align to the extractive uh, system story and and of course we know who owns the media we know who owns this media house um it's uh, you know part of that extraction system and i don't want you guys to be fired um but but the thing good is grief, <laughs> no i know you are good guy but i know look, who, you know look, but yeah. but but <laughs> one more, one more. You know? this system that you t- talk about mm. does it have an overseer does it have a structure it's a system systems sometimes are self perpetuating so these are self perpetuating systems they're, they're, so they're everybody s- knows that they're part of the system but it's kind of a silent it's uh, like a corp acquiescence to this thing that it's, we all know it, what we're supposed to be doing so nobody really it, asks questions or off feathers that what you're saying the rubber barons the city was talking about mm. the american rubber barons who mm. built america mm. um uh, one of the thing they did was uh, you know create self perpetuating system uh, you know uh, organizations mm. for example you when you take a coke or minute maid today do you even know who the founder of coca-cola is you don't even think about it i think about the product you think about the product mm. and that and that's that that has you know has continued selling uh, that that product uh, has a shareholding creates wealth for a certain number of people um mm. and then they keep perpetu- it keeps perpetuating and even now becomes self protecting and self and learning mm. it learns and then gets the best brains to perpetuate it and it, if you look at there's something i was um i was uh, we were exploring with someone else you look at um, psychopaths you look at uh, narcissists a lot of them are in three areas in religion uh in politics and in the corporate uh, leadership these guys who are and through through in social parts as well please a uh, social parts yeah yes social parts because mm. psychopaths eventually become you know social parts uh, and these are people who their work is you know it's ego it's it's a it's a um they, they are tapped because of their ego and how the, the ability to then be charismatic and mobilize resources towards serving that system yeah. and that, the reason why you introduced me as a community organizer um with komgabando na mapinduzi what you we are doing after realizing that you know just complaining we are having the, this the conversation you've just had mm. should be had in history classes in primary schools and secondary schools in this country but it will not be in fact our current president has is has been quoted saying that history should be done away with and history is memory uh, alexander the great when he came into egypt you know they sacked uh, the library of alexandria i don't know whether they cut it away our knowledge african knowledge or they burnt it to make sure that that memory was removed of the you know the memory that plato and socrates and all these came to learn in africa they were taught by black black people they came to learn and then that's how they developed the european the current european philosophy the greek and the roman philosophy they learned all that from africa but if you don't have that memory then you will think you are never great at any time you are backward and kwa mshenzi as you are told uh, and the europeans came to civilize that yes it's africa yet is africans who actually civilized europe the U- europe so what is the alternative to this system we have to educate educate ourselves we have to unlearn a lot of the things that we've been taught mm. um and we have to first educate ourselves and then we have to sit and find ways to move forward because we can't go and back. create a new system we have to create a new system we have to move forward we have to, and that's remember the conversation around us coming together and finding solutions because the solutions are from uh, are with the people um and that is what has been resisted by this system if you look at the constitution 2010 keeps talking about public participation public participation if you look at what the bbi case what won remember especially at the supreme court mm. there were the the the, the court of appeal there were five i think there were five major uh, areas that were that were but the, the supreme court tried to undo actually mm. tried to undo all of them but the ones they could not touch were two public participation because that was the spirit of that that constitution can we have the people decide how to be governed and i think that is the way forward and that's why as kongamano la mapinduzi we are we're not focusing on elections actually not in the next 5 or 10 years or mm. we're focusing on organizing our people coming together learning uh, and learning uh, we do a lot of political education 
uh, having such conversations with the people so that people know where they stand. So you want to create a new system? We are working to create a new system. Okay. And we want to take over. How do we trust that this system that you guys want to create will yeah. serve us better than Considering there is a system that will be created by human beings. Mm. So, so the thing is, um, the, the theory of change we have is that if we have as many informed people as possible, people knowing about systems, our systems work, um, come together and now sit together and deliberate and decide what, how they want to live their future, then they will put safeguards to ensure. And it is not, we are not reinventing the wheel. This, mm. this has been done. If you look at um, how Europe was developed, the current Europe, um, if you look at the systems, healthcare, education, transport, which, which is uh, so some of the places they have excelled, um, these things were developed by socialists towards the end of um, 19th century, early, early, early 20th century. And there were people who were oppressed by the by the then system, the, 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 you know, the, the monarchies. And these people came together and said, what are the basic things that we need? You know, what is the basic thing that a government should do for its people? Mm. I think if we Kenyans sit down and say, uh, what is the Kenyan dream? What are the basic things? I want to be able to take my kids to school. Um, and, and not pay through the nose. I don't want to be part of a commercialized education system. When I'm Manuel, uh, because a, a state that wants uh, a, a, a population that pays taxes then needs to make sure that they're healthy. So let's have a good health care system. Let food be affordable. Let people move from one place to the other easily. Like, like let's not be struggling with these basic things if you want to build a nation. And then people will say, how do we achieve this? You know, for example, I give an example of um, a lot of our studies, and I'll, I'm going to do profiling. Uh, we talk about cooks and uh, and watchmen, and we talk about lawyers. Uh, a lot of the watchmen around here are lawyers, and they come from. I I, I know quite a number who have huge tracts of lands in uh, in Western Kenya. But they come, and because of the wage economy, they want to come and work for a small amount of money in Nairobi so they can get cash. Because maybe, you know, the, the cost of food, or rather farming, would be, would be very high. What if we had a railway from Western Kenya uh, that had a high-speed train? Because uh, these guys now live in Kibra, Kawangware, wherever, in very deplorable situations. But what if we dignified them by making them live in their own home, in their own land? Uh, in Kakamega or in Bungoma or in Mumias or wherever, mm. and they took a high speed train at 6 a.m. in the morning, and within two hours they are in Nairobi mm. or, or, or whatever time they're in Nairobi, they come and do their work, get on the train in the evening, and go back. So, that when even the money they make, they can invest back to develop their farms. You know, just, that's just a wild thought. Uh, so, what if we had a government that then decides, okay, so we don't want everybody to come to Nairobi to look for for opportunities mm, yeah stay home uh, you stay at home but isn't, but isn't that what devolution was supposed that's to that's what create? it was supposed to do yes. but then uh, remember the the, uh, the 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 big bang destroyed that because the, the people who became who became governors or the former mps and of course they knew if you release money once at once without systems what happens they're gonna steal it but let me ask you this question Molimo. Mm. which country in the world can you say is not extractive which country has rather leaders mm. who are not extractive because the community experimented with us, the socialists experimented mm -hmm. with their ideas, and when you look at the leadership, they were still extractive. And that is the thing, that's, that's uh, you could call it human nature. So again, that's what you do, you put systems to counter that human nature. That's why Scandinavia has been thriving, because it's, it's not said we're going to be capitalists, uh, we're not going to be communists or socialists. It's picked the best what can yes, work from each of these systems. you could argue mm. they are what you call a welfare state. Mm. Which is... Uh, what you're discussing here. Yeah. Mm. What yeah. you're discussing yeah. here. Meaning, mm. the focus of ensuring mm. that the monarchy actually feels that this thing they call the government is actually looking for the interest. And you can see it. That's actually what I'm pushing for. You know, the, 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 um, the communism versus socialism versus capitalism yep. debate. Yep. 
or, or, or made, made, made it very hard for people to actually have these conversations openly. I, I, I remember when, which party was it? CPK, Communist Party of Kenya was changing from <laughs> SDP. Hmm. Uh, and the registrar of political parties said, Kenya is a capitalist state. You can't have, you a, cannot communist have a communist party. <laughs> and then she went to court and she was asked by the judge, uh, which statutes where, are you? Where did he say? <laughs> you know, <laughs> but it's, but it's, in, it's, it's been humbled into us that we are capitalists. Mm. And people don't even ask themselves what capital, capital is, big capitalism means. If you look at how we solve our problems as Kenyans, as they're struggling this economically, mm. if I'm unable to fundraise for my own, let's say I want to do a master's, I would call my friends and family. If I have a hospital bill, I can't pay. Or even the, the mama, mama Mboga, they form chamas where they, they pull their resources we to call be able table to achieve banking. things. Mm. What is that? That's socialism. <laughs> That's actually how, but even uh, to the higher level, when America had the, the economic crisis in 2008, yeah. um, the capitalists destroyed the economy. They were going to destroy the global economy. How was it solved? They are to be, be bailed out by the resources from all from Americans. Others. That's yeah. a socialism. Mm. I mean, what do you call that mm. if you are to think about it? Mm. So humanity solves problems when we come together and think together. And that's what we are doing as Kongamara and Mapindus. We are thinking, like, how can we, let's not start fighting, not keep fighting the system. Can we organize ourselves to be able to solve some of these to problems and hopefully maybe build a new system? Molemu, you've started off today by showing us where the problem is. We'll invite you so that you can now come and start showing us, okay, what would this other system look like and how can we get there? But thank you for joining us today. Thank you so much for the opportunity to have mm. this conversation. The Santa Sana. Mwalimu Mutemi Wakerma is a community organizer with Kongomano La Mapinduzi. Mapinduzi.